tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software, $100, and starting pricing for high-end software, $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal buyer's protection guarantee. The black American, the most influential, envied and copied people on the planet. American blackness is a clothing line that preserves and commemorates black American culture. Please visit AmericanBlackness.store.com.store wear your lineage loudly and proudly. Use discount code Tariq FBA at checkout to receive a 10% discount. American Blackness dot store. Introducing Historical Black Americans, a powerful journey through history. Discover 33 black American heroes who overcame adversity and shaped our nation's destiny. This book is a tribute to the importance of telling history's truth in its proper context. Empower young minds to uncover the history of America and embrace the courage that paved the way for change. Get your copy of Historical Black Americans today. Available now on Amazon and Kindle. Listen, are you ashy as hell? Do you have dry, parched skin? Does your elbows look like elephant knees? If so, you want to get your skin from crusty to lovely, go to ash kicking.com to get all the lotions, lubricants, and body butters that you need to get your skin in order. They got all types of health and beauty products, everything you need. They got incense, things to make your house smell good, things to make you smell good. So again, go to ashkicking.com. Again, that's ashkicking.com. Why are you scratching your skin like that? Girl, this soap that I use is useless for my skin. Try Adesino soaps. Adesino soaps? Girl, yes. Adesino soaps are all natural and organic. What can it do for my skin? It helps heal dry skin, oily skin, blemishes, wrinkles. It even helps take off your makeup. And get this. What? You choose your favorite fragrance for all sorts of occasions. <laughs> wow. I think I'll try Adesino soaps. Thanks, girl. My pleasure. Go to www.adesinosoaps.com. That's www.adesinosoaps.com. From the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural, foundational, black, American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror Root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Boom. What's going on, guys? I'm off my ass. What's going on with y'all, man? How y'all living? We are doing our thing. I have not been on live in a few didn't get a chance to do my regular Sunday broadcast. I was supposed to do it yesterday, and this I'm all over the place with it. I'm all over the place with it, but I'm here. How's everybody doing? Somebody said Trump said he will deploy the National Guard first day in office. I didn't hear that, and I don't know what the context of that is. I didn't hear anything about that, and I don't know what the context of that is. But, um, yeah, I would like to learn more about what was said. How's everybody doing, man? I'm in here. Let everybody know that we're live right now. Still a little bit under the weather. 
still trying to get it together. But I'm here, and we're going to chop up some good game on today's broadcast. Hope you guys got your root work. Hope you got your root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Look, there's another scent that y'all ain't ready for yet that I ain't, that's not even for sale yet. We got another scent that ain't even for sale yet. This one, y'all not ready for this one. This is the uh, Biloxi Blueberry. Well, it's all, I'm trying to get it to focus. Hold on. Uh, I'm trying to get it to focus. All right. That's the blueberry scent. Y'all not ready for that one yet. You're, you're not quite ready yet, but I'm here. Oh, man, a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. I mean, I hate that I missed Sunday's show, man. We were up in Vegas for the um, Thanksgiving holiday. Don't go to Vegas for Thanksgiving. It was, oh, it's too much, man. All of the, the, the food places, the lines are insanely long. And then a lot of stuff is closed. And it's hella cold up there around this time of year. Then we got sick and... Oh, it was a mess. And then driving back home was a beast. The traffic was a oh, man. It was like one road to get in. Oh man, our, our Vegas trip was was very janky. It was very very janky. And I'm up there. I didn't, I got sick up there. And you know, a lot of people get sick around Thanksgiving. You know, this is a season where a lot of people get sick and. Uh, a lot of the stores were closed. I couldn't get no herbal stuff. I left my herbal stuff here. Oh, man. And we're spreading the cold, the sickness. And I think I got it's some, some kind of respiratory thing I got going on. Um, and then, you know, we some of the buffets that we could get into up there... Um, the lines were hella long to get in. We went to a buffet at Caesar's Palace. I took, um, my daughter was with me, my older daughter, my mother. Um, I took my son, Mateo. The other boys were asleep. And Mateo wanted to be like his big sister and eat all the, that seafood, that all-you-can-eat seafood, crab legs and clams and mollusk and all of that. Well, he was eating all of these shellfish left and right. Next day, he wake up, his eyes are puffy as hell. One of the, some of the shellfish gave him an allergic reaction. Now he's fucked up. And, and we're driving around trying to find some damn Benadryl for kids and Claritin for kids. Oh my God. Man, man, man. So Vegas was a beast. Vegas was a beast, man. Yeah, that Caesar's Palace buffet ain't no damn joke. It's it's not a joke. But yeah, yeah, he he tried to step to the he tried to be like the big folks. And you know, he wanted to crack his own shells and all of that stuff. Boy, his eyes were closed shut the next day. Like, "Dad, what's going on with me?" I'm like, "Oh, shit." Lord. Man, man, man. Lord, Lord, Lord. But um, yeah. So we we here. We're we're back. We're back doing our thing. Oh, you know when we're up there in Vegas, we saw um the Jabberwockies. We saw the the group the Jabberwockies. They had a pretty good show up at the MGM. They had a pretty good show. It's interesting though to see that the Jabberwockies. These are some Asian guys. And these guys making millions, and I, I can't be mad at them off of our culture because hell, we ain't doing it like we're supposed to. You, you dig? We got to get off this thing where, when we make money from our culture, we got way too many people within our society or Black global society because you have a lot of tethers who try to denigrate other Black people for making money off of our culture. That's a real low-down, grimy thing to do, to denigrate black people for making money off their own culture when other people, that's all they do. 
And I'm looking at the, the group, the Jabberwockies, and I'm like, they got sold out shows every day. And basically, their whole thing, these are a bunch of Asian dudes dressed in hip-hop clothes, doing hip-hop dances, playing hip-hop and funk music. Yeah. I mean, their whole thing is our culture, and they're making a grip off of it. And I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad. They're making a grip off that. Um, we should be doing that. That's why the, the hip-hop thing, the, the documentary, just us knowing the importance of our culture, we, we create these cultures and then we just leave them to everybody to just capitalize off of it. I saw um, a revamp. I, I just saw um, a clip of um, Lear Cohen on The Breakfast Club. And boy, Lear Cohen is this dude. He was like, you know, they were talking to him about the um, exploitive things that he and other white music execs promote. And his answer, you know, he kept it 100. Hell, yeah, it's yeah, it's exploitive, but hell, I got to eat. Shit, I got a family to feed. Yeah? Now, people in those communities, they don't denigrate their own folks because they got to eat now. But I want y'all to understand, they look at us, we're a meal. I got to eat. Yeah, I know we're portraying you looking crazy, but there's money in that. There's money in portraying Negroes looking denigrated. There's money in that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he makes no end. I, I will give Leo Cohen that. At least he's honest about the exploitation to a certain degree. Now, Charlemagne did kind of check him a little bit. A little bit. He did kind of check him. He asked him some very good questions. Um, but Leo are just bold with it. And then he tried to, you know, try to talk trash about Dame Dash a little bit. Um, and Charlemagne was like, oh, man, wait till Dame Dash hears this. And Leah Cohen, who, who is that? Who is Dame Dash? I don't know that person. I don't know that person. Oh, uh, y'all done made millions off Dame Dash. Let's stop that. Don't sit there and do that now. Um, they done made millions off Dame Dash. Def Jam, Rockefeller, all right, all that I don't know him bullshit. You know, that's just to show disrespect because Dame was one of the few people that really, really hollered at him and just wouldn't. Dame saw the exploitation and was like, hey, man, you know, that ain't cool. Yeah. Yeah, he pretended he didn't know Dame. Uh, stop all that bullshit. All the millions y'all made off Dame Dash. All the millions, don't sit there. Who, who, who is that? I don't know him. I don't know him. No. Y'all made millions off that dude. And I'm saying millions off Dame. Because, yeah, Dame, without Dame, there would not have been a Jay-Z. Yeah, without Dame, there would not have been a Jay-Z. Y'all act, see, they, they do the divide and conquer. They do the divide and conquer. They'll get Jay-Z. It's all a you were the one. It was all about you in, in the first place. It was all about you. I, and I've said this many times. Remember, Jay-Z was, Jay was trying to get put on for a long time. Jay-Z could not get a record deal. Jay-Z was running with, with um, Big Daddy Kane, some established dudes. Jay-Z was um, with um, Jazz-O and all that. But Jay-Z... Jay-Z couldn't get a record deal. They went to all the labels. Jay-Z could not get a record deal by himself. When he got with Dame and they got the Rockefeller, they put that whole vision together. They got that whole Harlem swag and just really got that image together. Dame, you can't act like Dame wasn't instrumental in that, dude. Let's stop the bullshit. Give that dude whatever. Eh, Y'all can have whatever beefs or whatever because they, they played good cop, bad cop. Dame was the bad cop, a bad guy, good guy, bad guy. I don't want to put cops on, on brothers. But they had a formula that worked. 
Without Dame, that shit wouldn't have worked. Point blank. And they know that. I don't know all that. Who is he? I don't know who he is. Uh, that shit is corny. He should have been checked on that. You dig? Yeah, yeah, I heard about Diddy. Yeah, Diddy, they had to get him up out of Revolt. Revolt TV. They had a... They got to get him to step down as CEO because, you know, it's hot right now. Because the sponsors are pulling out. Um... Yeah, a lot of the sponsors are starting to pull out because of those accusations. And, you know, that's unfortunate. People can just put up accusations and, you know, just, um, you know, um, jeopardize the bag. And, and there's no validity to what a lot of people are saying. You don't, you know, people are saying shit right now. Um, and with that law out there with, that allows people to just bring a civil suit, you know, based on hearsay, you know, it's a... Um, and they understand that a lot of black dudes or black celebrities are going to be targeted with that primarily. They'll get a couple of white dudes. If they get two white dudes, they're going to get 10 brothers. So they understand that. They understand that you got to have a couple of white sacrifices to get a large number of the brothers. They understand that. Shout out to Nikki the God. And Nikki the God has a link there. She said to make a monthly contribution to the Hidden History Museum, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. And that's correct, family. We do need the family to make monthly contributions to the Hidden History Museum because that's how we keep the doors open at the Hidden History Museum, ladies and gentlemen. So we do need everybody just a little, a little bit help. Everybody put a little bit on the Hidden History Museum, hiddenhistorymuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. But let everybody know that we're live right now because uh, there's a lot of catching up we got to do, a lot of stuff we got to talk about. First thing we got to talk about, got to talk about the situation with T.I., tiny son, King Harris. Um, infamous video went viral this week. They were at a Falcons game, right? Up in the damn skybox. Um, the family was up in the skybox, and King Harris, they got into a conversation how, how he didn't grow up with a silver spoon, how he grew up by a bando at his grandma house. King Harris, Tiny and T.I.'s son, one of their sons, he's going through a light-skinned rebellious stage. He's the, the lightest of the kids. He's very light-skinned. And he's in Atlanta, and being light-skinned, a lot of people will test you. So now he kind of has to wants to show how gangster he is. So yes, the beige rage. Oh, we, I think we got some light-skinned people in the chat. They they don't like. He said somebody in the chat said Tariq is reaching with the title. So we got a couple of light-skinned people in the title. Don't worry. Listen, I have light-skinned children. Some of my children are light-skinned. I'm telling you what I know. I have to keep them from doing light-skinned shit. All right? King is doing light-skinned shit. That's what it is. It happens. You know, a couple of my kids are light-skinned. I have to stop them from doing light-skinned shit sometimes. All right? Every now and then... You know, going in a room and one of my kids laying on his stomach looking at the iPad. Roll over, boy. Don't lay on your stomach looking at your iPad. Sit up and sit up straight. I got to stop him from doing light skin shit every now and then. So, um, yeah, I know how it is. So the thing is, he's, he's doing light skin shit. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. And he has to try to prove himself, um, trying to make it seem like he had a hood upbringing, um, trying to act like he stayed at his grandma house. And this was the white grandma. And I guess the white grandma stays in the hood. So he's, yeah, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. Whoop-de-whoop-de-yada-yada. 
And then he's barking on his mom and dad because his mom and dad busted him out. They were like, yeah, you went to your grandma's house because you wanted to go over there because you were sucking the pacifier till you were 12 and we wouldn't let you do it. You see? So your little brother's light skin, you had to check him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not attacking all the light skinned people, but sometimes y'all do light skinned shit. Yeah. Sometimes y'all do a lot of little light skinned shit that you gotta be checked on. Well you got we gotta holler at you about that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so look, so let me play some of the clips of um yeah, I think he kind of pushed his mom and uh, let me let me play some of the clips of little King Harris. I never talked about how he's standing on business and all of this stuff. Hold on, let me let me play some of dude. Hold on, hold on. Woke right. oh, up with a roach on your face. Here, no, that's not the go. All right, then. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you go here. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. To make him look better, he said that he know not true. Silver spoon, I ain't never ate with that day a day in my life. I had a truth. You used to have to run to my grandma house. Okay, all right, so that's the early part of the fight, the argument, and then it got, he got, when they busted him out, when they said, yeah, you, he, he was, yeah, I used to go to my grandma's house, and I used to get in the fights, they were like, yeah, you begged to go to your grandma's house, so you can suck on the damn pacifier till you were 12. Yeah, you used to have tantrums so you can go over there because grandma would let you suck the pacifier. And that's that's why his mouth is a little janky. Now, somebody said that they, they were a little bit too rough for embarrassing him. No, no, no. He's up here clowning and you don't clown in front of your parents. Your parents are supposed to tell the truth about your ass to make you sit down. Now, him, I believe that he was on the passy until he was 12. That's why he has that underbite. And the thing is, with the underbite, I, he, didn't, he, he must have went down there to Columbia to Dr. Montoya. Did he go down to Dr. Montoya? And Dr. Montoya is my guy. I've had done a work by Dr. Montoya before. So he went down there to Dr. Montoya, it looks like. <laughs> and Dr. Montoya... Put them, uh, or who, I don't know, I, I won't put it on Dr. Montoya. I don't know who, who was his dentist. I, I don't even know if it was Dr. Montoya. I don't know who his dentist was. But a lot of folks go down there to Dr. Montoya down in Columbia. That's where a lot of people go to. So he went to somebody down in South America, uh, allegedly. And he got them big ass caps on his teeth. <laughs> he already had an underbite from sucking that passy. So he done went down to Columbia somewhere. I, I don't want to put it on Dr. Montoya. Who was this doctor? They gave him the world's biggest damn veneers. I don't know why they gave him veneers that big. Did he have braces growing up? But yeah, him sucking on that pacifier gave him an over and an underbite. Yeah. So it brought the top and the bottom out and made it protrude like crazy. He has an over and an underbite. 
It's both. So now he looks like a baby swordfish walking around. And then they went and put veneers on these motherfuckers. Guess he had braces. So they tried, T.I. and Tiny did the best they could do. They did the best they could do with that mouth from sucking on that pacifier. And he went down there and brought more emphasis to the, the teeth by getting some big ass veneers put on there. Okay? And now he's running around here with these teeth talking about how he's standing on business. Okay? So, then he gets into like a real, you know, him and his dad start low-key tussling, it looks like. Because he's now hurt because they didn't call him out. But yeah, you're staying with your grandma because you own that passy. So now he feels like, okay, now the streets are hearing this. So this is messing up my gangster image that I'm trying to manufacture that's non-existent. Um, um, Little King Harris... Nobody was buying the gangster shit anyway, brother. So you have no reason to be afraid or, or be upset with your parents. Nobody was buying the gangsterism stuff. There's nothing wrong with having a silver spoon. No, I ain't had no silver spoon. I ain't, yes, yes, you did. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, here's him upset him, him in that mouth. Here's him in that mouth. All right. That mouth is a beast. All right, here's he him getting into it with dad. And I know you, I know you, I know you, I know you. I know you. Ain't no mystery about here. I know you though. Man, I know you though. I know you. What's wrong with y'all? Why y'all doing that to me? Y'all know me. You know I stood in business. You know I stand on business. Why you even letting somebody play with me like that? Why you letting somebody play with me like that? Why you letting him play with me like that? Why you letting him play with me like that? light skin ass down was a person I swear boy look look and, and some of y'all dudes out here man these young dudes they think that being hood or being street is a flex man not really dude if you came from something good that's great Dude, you're in a skybox. You're in a skybox, chilling. You got a silver spoon in your mouth. You're sitting in your family's skybox trying to talk about how gangster and how street you are and how you live by the bando and you stood on business. Dude, your parents did a great job creating a lane so that you wouldn't have to stand on business in no damn street shit. He did go to Dr. Montoya. Okay. All right. Don't sit here and get mad at your mom and dad for giving your little ass a lane so that you ain't got to be out of here getting in trouble, taking penitentiary chances, playing with your life. Your mom and dad did the right thing for your little old goofy self, boy. And no disrespect to the family. I'm just, I'm going to talk to his ass like they're going to talk to him on the block. You want to get out here on this block for real. It ain't for you. This ain't for you. For a couple of reasons, it ain't for you. It ain't for you because, number one, you want to be out here on some street shit for clout. That's what you don't be on the shit for. Street cats, for real, for real, you're trying to get out the game. So you ain't really trying to get clout from squares because that's what you want clout from. You want clout from square niggas who ain't even out there on the block like that. 
Real street niggas don't care about no clout from no squares. Because you ain't getting clout from no real street niggas. That niggas on the streets know you full of shit. So you ain't getting clout from them. You're trying to get clout from squares, homie. It ain't, that's not how it works. That's number one, why you, this ain't for you. Um, another thing, the whole disrespect of your parents. On some street shit, there's two things that's not tolerated. Any harm or disrespect to children or disrespect to your parents, especially your mother. That's very highly fry, uh, frowned upon in the streets, King Harris. Disrespecting your parents is highly frowned upon. Especially your mother. That's not what you do. Niggas don't like that. If cats on the streets, you're supposed to be doing business with, because if you on the streets, you're supposed to be doing business with somebody on the streets. Who you doing business with? You ain't got to do no business on the streets. So your, your dad telling you you driving in reverse, he's telling the truth. If you out here dealing with street cats, you're supposed to be doing some transactional business. You see? If you're not doing transactional business, ain't nobody trying to fuck with you because you're a potential snitch. Because if you get pinched and you just out here playing, you're going to start telling on people. Don't nobody want to deal with no niggas like that. You, you understand what I'm saying? Y'all leave that shit alone, man. It ain't cute. Cats want to try to act street. It, leave that shit alone, man. Nigga, you don't choose the streets. The streets choose you. That's what you don't understand. You don't wake up one day and say, hey, I want to be on some street shit. That's not how it works. It has never worked like that. You don't choose this yet. Nobody says that. And if a motherfucker says that, they're not street at all. That's a motherfucker who's playing and clowning and bullshitting with it. You, you, you dig? The game chooses you. You end up in the game. You don't choose it. Things happen. Things go a certain way. And then you end up in the game. The game brings certain people in. The streets choose you. That's what niggas don't get. Damn, and, and the thing is, you already got a lane where you ain't got to touch that. You don't have to touch none of that stuff. But the thing is, as a light-skinned kid, with a silver spoon in his mouth, you know, you want to go out into the, some of the parties and some of the clubs and you don't get the respect you don't think you get. You don't get the respect you think you should get. So now you want to manufacture something. Let, let me tell you something, man. You can still get respect by earning your own way. I know you feel like you got to... You know, you, you, you got to follow in your dad's shadow. Your dad did this shit so you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You can make your own lane. You got other brothers. Don't his other brothers make music? He has another brother. The brother be on some herbal tea shit. I, 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 what's the other brother's name? I forgot what his name His other brother knows his lane. I think he has another brother who raps. He raps about herbs and medicines and shit. I don't know what he raps about, but he's... He ain't on that. I saw a video of his other brother rapping in a library. <laughs> so it was, yes, that's your lane right there. Yeah? That's fine. Y'all, look, the streets ain't what you got. It ain't what it what, what it's it ain't what y'all think it is, dude. No. It ain't what you think it is. The game is different right now. Domani, right. 
Messiah Harris, Demani, Demani. Yeah, sometimes you go go in a different direction. Y'all remember when DMX, DMX went through hell in life, and RIP to our brother DMX. He went through hell, and his children. He had, he had a son who was like you know singing like damn near country and folk music. You know, what I mean? which was his lane. Which was his lane. You know, his son, you don't want to follow your dad's footsteps. Your dad is, you know, is a what was a legend, but he's still being very destructive to a certain degree. So you don't want to follow that. Yeah. Right. Damani's like, like, you know, on some Andre 3000 type of thing, right? Yeah, with flutes. Yeah, get you a flute. That's what, what King Harris needs to do. He needs to go the Andre 3000 route. See, Andre 3000, and I respect him. He's, you know, he comes out of the streets of Atlanta. He's a, hey, I don't have to do that. I can just be at peace and just do what I do. That's what King Harris needs to do. He needs to get a clarinet. He has the teeth for it. He has the mouth and teeth for a clarinet or a flute. You know, play a wind instrument. Stop trying to convince people about your gangster. Get you a saxophone, brother. And get your artistic self and display it a certain way. Show your artistic self in a certain way. And then somebody said he might swallow the flute. No, he'll be all right. He'll be all right. He's just doing a lot of light skin shit right now. It is, but stay away from that street shit. It ain't what it what it's cracked up to be. The streets, man, is you got to get the hell up out of there. Y'all people get in the the music industry, and they're associated with the music industry. And then they try to touch that shit for credibility, and it don't it ain't working. That's why look, Young Thug and those guys are on trial right now. These guys were already in the industry, and they're you know allegedly claiming these gangs and all of this stuff, and they're going on trial now. Have y'all heard the defense? Dude, um, the the Young Thug trial is popping, and, you know, they said uh, allegedly gunnered and told on people, look, it ain't, what you cra it ain't what it's cracked up to be. But did y'all see part of the, the Young Thug trial, um, the lawyer, the lawyer's trying to explain away the gang signs. Look, did y'all see this? This was today. Because now, you know, they, <clears throat> the prosecution, they're just showing all your rap lyrics. Okay, here's your gun, and here's your song about I'm going to kill that nigga, and here's the dead nigga, and I'm going to sell this dope, and here's the bag of dope, and I'm pushing P, and here's the P, and here's the gang signs. So they're using all of their lyrics. They're trying to use their lyrics against them. So now the lawyer is trying to spin it. And this shit is hilarious. <laughs> Nigga, the lawyer, hold on. The lawyer was like talking about the gang signs. Nigga, hold on, hold on. This is in the trial right now. See, this is why y'all stay away from the street stuff. So your lawyer ain't got to do splaining and spinning for you. Hold on, hold on. 16, 2022, and Jeffrey releases this inside Jeffrey's Instagram account. And the prosecution is targeting, that's Jeffrey taking a selfie in the mirror, and he has his hand up, and the indictment that the prosecution had the grand jury return says he's holding up a blood sign, and that furthers this conspiracy. There's nothing wrong with holding up a blood sign, but that's not a blood sign. A blood sign is like this. It looks like a B. That is a P. Jeffrey's fingers are down. And what you'll learn is that Jeffrey just released with Sergio Kitchens, perform known as Gunna, a song that is wildly popular. It's around the globe. It's called Pushing P, and it's positivity. It means any circumstance you're in, if you think positively about something, you can make it through. 
You're pushing positivity. Pushing positivity. Boy, I love it. You're pushing P. Jeffrey <laughs> is showing the P. It's not a B. But that became from the district attorney's office in Fulton County, from the city of the Atlanta Police Department, a reason that furthers this supposed conspiracy. My nigga said, that ain't no Pyru. The P is for positivity. <laughs> Love it. Go ahead, lawyer. You better spin that shit. Your Honor, that's not a B. B doesn't mean blood. It's for blessed. <laughs> He's showing everybody how blessed he is to have a platinum album. Yes, Your Honor, you see my client had up some C's. Um, C doesn't mean crip. It means Christ. Jesus Christ! The C stands for Christ. The C is for Christianity. So, <laughs> yes, my, my, my client is not a gang member. You dig? Uh -huh. Boy, they are spinning it, man. Splaining. <laughs> so this is what, stay away from it, man. If you ain't got to be in it, stay away from the shit, man. Stay away from it so your lawyer don't be up in court talking about you pushing positivity. <laughs> it's not Pyru, it's positivity. And the red bandana, that's for the blood of Christ. That represents the blood of Jesus. You dig? Oh, goodness, man. Goodness, the game is a beast out here. The game is a beast. Uh, speaking of the game being a beast, see, people talk about hip-hop. Um, they put a lot of extras on what's going on with hip-hop. I saw an interview where they had Umar, and a lot of people were disagreeing with Umar. Some people agreed. Umar did an interview talking about how, you know, the, the negativity of hip hop, and there are no institutions. All of these successful rappers, and the, none of them have successful institutions. There are no institutions. Hip hop, I would disagree with that. I mean, there are rappers who, you know, got their businesses and shit going on, but to, to say what hip hop institutions, Okay, what R&B institutions are there? What rhythm and blues or what, what blues institutions are there? You have successful rappers who do have successful businesses outside of hip hop. So that does exist. I don't know what hip hop institution there could be, but you do have a lot of rappers who are very successful and they've used hip hop and used rap and the entertainment industry to create successful lanes for a lot of people. So that does exist. So I, I don't get this whole thing where, you know, rappers, and, and we put a lot of emphasis on putting responsibility on rappers you think these are entertainers. You know, they're entertainers. If, you know, they get money, they want to do whatever with their money, that's fine. If they want to help certain communities with their money, that's fine. My thing is, I look at what we should do on an everyday basis, not just depending on a rapper. Um, we need to start get, just getting into the mindset of us getting stuff popping um, as individuals where we don't depend on who's the hot rapper at the time. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. White society, they don't depend on the hot entertainer. Asian people, they don't depend on the hot Asian entertainer at the time. They understand the, the power of codification. How a lot of people, all you got to do is bring a little to the table for the greater goal. So I love for us to keep that mindset. That's why you know, with um, the film projects we have, like Microphone Check, we were very successful with getting Microphone Check popping off because we didn't depend on one or two people. We don't have to depend on that. 
All it takes is a lot of people doing a little, just like ants. Ants are powerful workers. And ants get a lot of stuff done. It's a lot of little entities all getting on code working together. That's why ants aren't to be played with like that. You think? Ants are very dangerous. You think? Ants are very dangerous, even though you can, an ant by itself, you can flick it, you know, and destroy it by itself. But together, ants are nothing to play with. Nigga, you've had, you got ants out here who they will skin large animals down to the bone, you dig? When they get on code. Man, you get some of these ants that'll skin a large animal to the damn bone. Once they get on code, ants are persistent. Because of their codification, they're, they're army ants. They're not to be played with with their own code. Bees too. And that's why they try to get us off code. People understand us being on code. That is the secret. Us doing things, maintaining networks with each other, looking out for each other. They understand that part of the game is very dangerous. That's why they always try to pull us aside. Going back to the whole Rockefeller, Dame Dash, Jay-Z. They, they got in between them and, and, and pulled them aside. And you know, got Jay-Z over here. Say, hey, got to get Dame out of here. We can't have you black dudes on code working together, cultivating all of these acts and then doing deals with us. See, we got to own all the shit. We can't have you guys own part of this. And no, no, we got to own all of it. Let's let's split y'all niggas up. You, you dig? They got to get us from being off code, on code with each other. They always got to break that up. They always have to break that up. You see? So these brothers, man, going back to Rockefeller, these guys were cultivating legends. Remember, Rockefeller, man, Beanie Siegel. Um, oh, man, so many people. Kanye, that's Rockefeller. There's somebody they cultivated, brought in, creating these legends. You understand? And when you have the white execs cultivating our artists and curating our artists, when they do it, we get Sexy Red. We get the Sukihanas. We get white execs. And I want y'all to understand, white execs sat in the room and had a meeting with each other. And these folks said, you know what would be interesting? Let's let's set up some performances of a little skinny hood rat who's barefoot. She's rapping about her dude in jail while pregnant with another nigga. And she's gonna rap about her booty hole being brown and her coochie pink. And some white execs sat up there and help organize that. You understand what I'm saying? White execs sat in a room and put that together. When Sexy Red is performing out here pregnant and barefoot, and there's a video of her rapping in jail. There's a bunch of niggas and she's rapping in jail. I'm not going to even show the video. These are white execs. Yeah, these are white execs that's putting that together. Yeah. So we got to understand when they try to get us off code, why they want to get us off code. When, when they get us off code, 
they can cultivate garbage and put it out there. When we're on code, we're not going to curate the same garbage they curate. See, when we're on code, we create things like the Hidden History Museum. You go to the Hidden History Museum, and if you're in LA, come by the Hidden History Museum. You go to the side of the building, we have icons like John Henry Clark on the building, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing on the building, Dr. Kaba Kamini, Professor James Small on the building, Dr. Claude Anderson on the building. You see? That's who we're going to teach the black community about. when we are in control of the cultivation of our culture. And now with the movie Microphone Check, we're cultivating who we're going to put in the film and which legends we're going to have represent. We got the real legends representing in the movie Microphone Check. We got the people who were for real there from the very, very beginning. Whenever you see these hip hop documentaries or whatever by the dominant society, they'll have one or two original black legends in there, if that, and then they'll have Crazy Legs and Fat Joe and all of these people in there talking about the origins of hip hop. That's why the story is always janky. And your boy Fat Joe is still at it, by the way. There was um, one thing I saw where Fat Joe was doing some Spanish-speaking press right here. And I'm not going to play it because y'all won't. most of y'all don't speak Spanish. But just look at the title. All right, this is the title here. He's on a Spanish-speaking broadcast. I don't know if I get this thing to close up right. Talking about hip hop. Why can't I get this thing to go down? All right, Fat Joe. We Latinos created hip hop. All right. We Latinos created hip hop. And he's speaking Spanish in this thing. Calle jodiendo. Entiende, yo estaba en los. Jodía mucho en la calle. Yo era un bichote en el calle. So it's like, damn, 50-50, we created it. I've been telling people, play it, play it, you're translating. I, yeah, I don't want to play it. <clears throat> because Again, a lot of people won't be able to understand it. I, yeah, I tried to play it with the captions. The captions are in, are in Spanish. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when did he, did he say he didn't know Spanish? He's speaking it fluently in there. Man. But I, I've been telling people with the whole Fat Joe thing and all of these people, it's going from 50-50 to we created it. And speaking of the South, look, some, some cats in the South got a little upset with Fat Joe because Fat Joe was talking about how when he did lean back and all that, all the people in the South start biting him. And they got it. All the lean records came from him. And old boy, one of those guys had to check him like, hey, hey, Joe, what you talking about? Like, whoa, whoa, we didn't, hold on. So look, look, let me play it. I, I've been telling people that's where it's going. It's going from that 50-50 to y'all Y'all got it from us Puerto Ricans. So here's Fat Joe talking about all the, the lean this and all of that and how lean with it, rock with it. That came from him. How the Southerners start jacking him. Hold on. Unbelievable. But if you use somebody's music and you sample it and you don't clear it and you don't give them no money, they can sue you. Me personally, 
I have never sued nobody for that. And trust me, they don't have, make it rain, make it, make it, make it rain, or lean with it, rock with it, lean. Like, my shit's been jacked. <laughs> my, my shit been jacked. Legendary. I want y'all to listen to what he's saying. All that lean with it. So all he's saying, basically, all the records from the South with lean this and lean that came from him. Shoulder lean the show. Like my shit and chat. Like if I went to court, I'd be like, exhibit A. Yo, look, man. Real quick, man. I just seen Fat Joe, a clip of Fat Joe interview where he talking about Niggas buying his music and taking his style. He could have sued niggas. He talking about, I could have sued for lane with a nigga. Get your motherfucking sue on, nigga. Nigga ain't took shit from you. Nigga, I'm from the South, nigga. We don't bite New York, niggas. No salute, nigga. Lean back, where was that? Who, nigga? But I didn't hear, we didn't hear lean back, nigga, and say, nigga, we finna make a song like that, nigga. I'm from the South, nigga. I'm from Bankhead, nigga. I'm from the West Side, nigga. We still on our own shit, nigga. We created culture, nigga. And, nigga, the music we made started a whole fucking genre, nigga. We don't bite, niggas. We uh, okay. So, yeah, people are like, man, people ain't going to be, they're like, enough is enough. Hey, dude, we didn't get nothing from you, which is true. The brothers in the South, and, and, and this ain't no North, South, none of that, but nobody, the brothers in the South weren't biting no, nothing from Bat Joe. They weren't, in, no, they weren't. Man, I'm folks are starting to say, hey, man, I'm, I'm telling y'all, man. I'm telling y'all, it's that's where they've always wanted to go with this stuff. That we get it from them. That fuck that 50-50 stuff. See, if you let them get away with that lie, you might as well lie all the way. Just like the, the hip-hop came from Jamaica lie. You see, by saying that some Caribbeans, it, um, Koo Hurt came over here and brought sound clash culture and, and um, sound system culture and toasting to foundational black Americans. We let that goofy ass lie fester for way too long. And then that turned into, well, Hip hop came from Jamaica, which isn't true at all. You then, see a lot of these lies, man. They had to be checked a long time ago. We should have been checking them. And if you let one lie get out there, and the lie is that hip hop was created 50-50 by blacks and Latinos, then it gets into well, y'all actually got a lot of stuff from us Puerto Ricans. Which is a lie. Yeah. And the brothers in the South, they've been doing shoulder dances and lean type of dances forever down there. Dude, they didn't bite that. Dude, they didn't bite that from nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Man, we had songs in the 90s, the gangster lean. And man, please. Come on, man. <clears throat> now, Derek Colon and his people, they put up something where they keep trying to talk about some rock dance that they were doing in the 60s. And they're sitting up talking about how this rock dance was the basis of all street dances. All right? I'm telling y'all, if you lie, hell, you might as well go all the way out with the lie. So they're talking about this rock dance that they were doing to our funk music. They listen to our funk music, start doing some rock dance, and then we saw them and then start doing street dances from what we saw them do. I don't know nobody who's ever seen this rock dance. Evidently, they have no footage of it. But they give demonstrations of this rock dance that we didn't stole from them. So Derek Galone got some of his people up here talking about the rock dance 
Listen to this nonsense. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. The entire genre. One that would evolve. Oh. In fact, rock was an entire genre. One that would evolve into all the street style dances we have today. Okay. So all the street styles, he's saying that the Puerto Ricans created the rock dance and all the street dancing styles came from that. So never mind the black, the black people in the South who were doing street dances, the black people in Chicago, where a lot of the street dances came from, the black people in the Bay, where a lot of the boogaloo dances and street dances came from, somehow... Y'all saw some Puerto Ricans doing the rock dance somewhere. We don't know how we saw y'all do it. Forget about Don Campbell Lock in 70, 71, creating locking and all of that, which is one of the, the street dances that's still infused in a lot of street dancing now. No, no, no. It's some Puerto Ricans rock dancing that I don't know how people saw it, but hold on, hold on. So, all right, so this is, this is the demonstration. This is the demonstration of the rock dance he's gonna show you. All right, so this is the, this is the dance that foundational black Americans saw them doing in the late 60s and then we picked up on it all right we saw them doing this and we got this from them 1970 the latino community like i said maybe the puerto ricanos took the groove from the black and brown communities the black and brown what grew from black what black and brown was only a black community that was grooving blended it with the sensuality of the mambo, the footwork of the salsa, and the spirit of the merengue, all from the Latino diaspora that we did at home. We took those and we turned it into the rock dance. Okay, all right. So, family, what, what the hell is this? Are these people on crack? Are they on crack? <laughs> so this is what we were stealing from them. Dude, we weren't getting this from them. <laughs> These folks have lost their minds with the damn lies. <laughs> you dancing to black music. So we didn't make up our own dances to our own music. So we had to mix it with the merengue. <laughs> if y'all don't stop, man, we were, yeah, we were doing that on roller skates. We were doing that type of stuff on roller skates, dude. Yeah, the only rock you're talking about is crack rock because you're smoking crack with the lies. <laughs> Like we didn't have a whole television show soul train where we're getting down every damn week. You there? <laughs> so dude, these people are losing their damn minds with the lies. It is utterly ridiculous. But anyway, man, let me get up out of here. I think we had a good conversation today. A lot of folks in here. Again, everybody, go to rootworkstyle.com, rootworkstyle.com, get the rootwork deodorant. Everybody, if you can, make your monthly contribution to the Hidden History Museum. You know, that really keeps everything afloat. You keep everything afloat with the Hidden History Museum. Our institution, that's for real grassroots. And we're going to try to put together an event there in a couple of weeks. I'm keeping. I'm going to keep people posted on that, ladies and gentlemen. 
And um, we're going to have um, an Arata Sese holiday gift sale in a few days. A lot of people um, wait on our holiday sales. We're going to have that popping soon in a couple of days. I'm going to keep you guys posted on that. Anyway, guys, y'all have a great afternoon.